Welcome back to News 5 at 630. It's Tuesday, so let's talk about a little college football right now. Why not? Join now by Jesse Kurtz of the Mountain West and one half of the voice of the Falcons on KVOR with Jim Arthur. Jesse, all right, let's get right to it. The Falcons suffer their first loss of the season Saturday mm -hmm. on the road at Florida Atlantic. The rally late. They come up short. The biggest thing I noticed, Isaiah Sanders gets yeah. the start, plays the whole game. Arion Worthman does not play at all. Are we setting ourselves up for a two-quarterback system, or is somebody going to just come out and be the guy? Well, Troy Calhoun has said that you have to have two guys, yeah. and he's shown that he's played a couple of guys. And he's also said that it's a week-by-week -week thing. And I, I, sometimes that's coach speak. Sometimes it yeah. is. But I do believe in this instance that Troy Calhoun is being absolutely legit in saying whoever gives us the best shot to win that week and what we see in practice is who's, who we're going to see. And to that point, I think Isaiah Sanders has earned the right to continue to start until maybe he proves otherwise. He made two starts, both against bowl teams, mm -hmm. Utah State and against Florida Atlantic. Was good throwing the ball, was good running the ball, 164 yards through the air, 34 yards rushing. He led the offense in a way that I think has earned him a shot to continue to start. Might you see Arian Worthen? Perhaps. But I think Isaiah Sanders right now is the guy you're going to see. The Palmer Ridge graduate has played well in the time that he has gotten out there. All right, we look at o Air Force overall. It's a younger team. They've done this rebuilding, reloading thing before. Is this kind of what we're setting ourselves up for maybe 2019 and then 2020 down the road? I, I, you're always building there and rebuilding yeah. the, because you don't have that red shirt year, right? You exactly. have to sometimes play those younger guys where it looks like you're rebuilding. But look, we're only two games into this season. There's a lot of football to be played. Right. The thing that I'm most excited about is some of that young talent, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I think there's three guys that you're really going to look at that are going to be big time players. This season, but certainly next year, we're talking about Mo Fafita right over the, uh, the, the ball at the nose tackle position, the nose guard position. He's the biggest player in Air Force history. You see yeah. Kyle Johnson right there, a great pick six. You're talking about Jordan Jackson, an edge mm -hmm. rusher, and the guy that everyone loves, Lakota Wills. He recovered the, the punt for the touchdown. This guy has been a major yes. player since he showed up on campus, played as a true freshman, first to do that since Alex Hansen. That trio of guys, coupled with Garrett Coppola getting that extra year next year because of the, his medical redshirt per se, I really think this team will be loaded next year, but by no means is this a rebuilding year. No doubt about that. All right, so the Falcons have the weekend off. Two weeks now, they're going to play Utah State yeah. in Logan, 8-15 kickoff. Then they get Nevada. Then they host Navy. As we look at the schedule overall, what sort of things are jumping out to you that that's going to be a crucial game for the Falcons? Well, it, it's a tough stretch, let's face it. You're facing three teams, three of the next four teams are against bowl teams. Yeah. Utah State fresh up a bowl win. They have every single offensive lineman back from a year ago. The great quarterback, Ron Quavian Tarver, is the uh, is the big time wide receiver for Utah State. But you're gonna look at the Navy game. That's yeah. gonna be the big one. You probably gotta split with those service academy mm -hmm. teams if you're gonna go to a bowl game because the Mountain West schedule is pretty tough. You got San Diego State, you got Boise State, Look, you're going to have to split with those service academy yeah. games, and that's going to be a big one first weekend in October at the academy. On Thanksgiving Day, Air Force hosts Colorado State, a team that looked like they were left for dead after the first two games. Yeah. They come back, they recap briefly, uh, they knock off Arkansas. You saw the game, we all saw the game. Uh, an incredible comeback is really the only words you can describe it. Perfect win at the perfect time. Yes. There's a lot of fans, alumni, that had left this team for dead. A loss to Hawaii opening uh, week of the season, a loss to CU, you said they're not going to beat Arkansas and they're yeah. not going to beat Florida. All of a sudden, you're a team that's one and two. I think this is a team that's now on an upward trajectory. Can they get to six wins? Yeah, because they needed this one. And right. they needed it for the fan base. They needed it for Mike Bobo. There are people ready to turn on him. But absolutely, this was the biggest win of the Mike Bobo era. And I think it can only do positive things going into Florida, who's coming up a loss themselves. Oh, that'll be an interesting one to see. The Rams going to the swamp on Saturday. Jesse Kurtz, the voice of the Mountain West and one half of the Air Force Falcons, joining me here on News 5.